This is Dr. Lam. The seven most common mistakes in adrenal fatigue recovery are number one, improper use of nutritional supplements. Natural compounds are very different from prescription drugs. Clinical behaviors of prescription drugs are usually well defined and follow a curve that is highly predictable and highly researched. Compare this with natural compounds, you will find there are significant differences. Number one, many natural compounds have different dose dependent behaviors. In other words, how they behave at one dose can be very different from how they behave at another dose. So 100 milligrams of one item may behave differently than 500 milligrams of another item. This does not mean that it is better. It can sometimes be worse. Number two, the exact standardization of what is considered a normal dose is not well known. And so therefore, uh, it is unsure what is the exact dosage for a certain nutrients. And it is therefore body specific rather than uh, the ability to have a standardized dosage. Number three, most compounds have little or no recognizable side effect at doses many times than RDA dose. But because many people tend to follow the RDA, uh, which is quite low, the tendency therefore is to be underdosing themselves. Number four, a few studies have been conducted in the, in the toxic consequences of many natural compounds due to funding constraints. As a result, this contributes to even less standardization. Number five, some natural compounds, especially herbs and glandulars, can behave differently in the same person. Depends on that person's state of dysfunction. For example, those with mild adrenal fatigue may do well with these herbs, which tend to be allergenic. However, if you have adrenal fatigue in advanced stage, they may behave as stimulants. Uh, the optimum uh, therapeutic dosage required for each person's recovery is body specific. In other words, the right dose for one person uh, can be very different from another person and in fact can be toxic. Furthermore, uh, there's a dramatic uh, differences in the bioavailability of nutrients made available to the cells dependent on the delivery system. A nutrients that are delivered by just a regular tablet or by liquid or by liposomal forms are very, very different in terms of absorption from the gut into the bloodstream and ultimately delivered to the cell. Lastly, uh, different manufacturers uh, use different natural compounds and low quality nutritional supplements are usually less effective than higher quality ones. Because of the lack of this knowledge in the general public, inappropriate use of nutritional supplements is rampant in all parts of natural health. And in the case of adrenal fatigue, it's especially dangerous because recovery not only can be impeded, but can also be worse. Secondly, an uh, inexperienced healthcare provider can contribute to a slow recovery. Most conventional physicians are not well informed of adrenal fatigue because they are not taught in medical school. The functions of the adrenal glands therefore have wide influence with the symptoms that often defy conventional medical logic because a person usually complains with so many symptoms including fatigue, insomnia, hypoglycemia, heart palpitations, salt cravings, sugar cravings, in the joint pain, sore muscles, exercise intolerance. This is basically very, very difficult for a person to sort it out if they don't have uh, the alert of adrenal fatigue. However, these symptoms can be explained under the unified umbrella of adrenal fatigue when conventional medicine has exhausted all the investigative tools. Unfortunately, because most doctors are not well versed in adrenal fatigue, this is a process they set them embark on. Instead, symptomatic approach of suppression of symptoms uh, such as using uh, energy uh, stimulating compounds with drugs as well as uh, thyroid medications and hormones are used and this usually makes things worse over time although it can have temporary benefit. Third, the excessive use of prescription drugs and medication is a big problem because they can make the adrenal fatigue worse. In the case of adrenal fatigue, we should expect and respect the body's signs and symptoms as they are variable sensitive indicators instead of suppressing them. If you suppress the uh, symptoms, the body is not going to be able to signal you and instead the body is being pushed to generate more energy when what it really wants is a nurturing approach to reheal itself. Uh, thyroid replacement is a particularly a problem if the person has thyroid problems secondary to adrenal fatigue and not a primary hypothyroidism problem because by stimulating the thyroid, you're stimulating the body to increase more energy. Ultimately, this will fail if adrenal fatigue is the root cause. Antidepressants are often prescribed and this may make the problem worse uh, with addiction and withdrawal problems and some people simply cannot tolerate them. 
anxiety agent are prescribed to calm the patients. This works temporarily and has its use, but overuse can be a problem. Sleep medication is frequently prescribed, and this has its own sets of problems with withdrawals, and it's not easy for many people to take even the right kind of sleep medication in the journey fatigue. And some people can get even wired and tired with sleeping pills. In other words, they have paradoxical reactions, which we will go into later. A hormone replacement without added consideration uh, to the thyroid as well as the ovarian system is a problem, especially with the use of thyroid hormone we mentioned earlier, as well as estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. Uh, number, uh, furthermore, antibiotics are usually prescribed if a person has frequent infection. Uh, this can lead to gastrointestinal upset and internal dysbiosis. Finally, uh, steroids are commonly prescribed uh, to suppress symptoms. Uh, while short-term use can have its place, oftentimes we found that the nutritional approach, if it's done properly, can be very, very good, and steroids are sometimes and oftentimes not necessary unless there's no other choices. Fourthly, the failure to recognize paradoxical unusual reactions. Paradoxical reactions are generally more prevalent in natural compounds because of the way it's made and the process and the lack of standardization. Yet, conventional doctors are not fully prescribed or alert to understand what is going on. Nutrients that are suitable for one body are not necessarily good for another person. So you have paradoxical reactions such as a sense of fatigue when a medication is being taken, a sudden onset of anxiety attacks or impending doom at rest, sudden onset of palpitation despite normal cardiac function, increased uh, of fluctuation in blood pressure, uh, increase a sense of being beaten up uh, that lasts for days after rigorous exercise, uh, uh, meaning a body that's really drained, uh, brain fog, waking up in the middle of the night for no reason, a sense of being wired and tired all the time, a feeling of more toxic, a sense of an emotional fragile state, uh, multiple trips going to the emergency room only to be told everything is normal, a sense of well-being after taking selected nutrients only to follow by a crash. All these are examples of paradoxical reactions that normally uh, defy conventional medical logic, but it happens frequently in adrenal fatigue, and this has to be watched out for. These paradoxical reactions are basically the body's signs and symptoms of telling us something else is going on and requesting us to look deeper. And if we fail to look deeper, then we just suppress these symptoms. It will only make the body more rebellious over time. Fifth, uh, there's a failure uh, to recognize multi-organ involvement. Uh, this failure, uh, often associated with adrenal fatigue, leads to a narrowing focus that makes the condition uh, over time worse. The ovarian adrenal thyroid axis is a critical axis, and these organs are intimately codependent upon each other uh, in adrenal fatigue, and this balance has to be done properly for a person to feel good. Unfortunately, this is a convoluted type of picture because it involves ovarian dysfunction leading to estrogen dominance and adrenal dysfunction with symptoms of adrenal fatigue, as well as thyroid imbalance with symptoms of hypothyroid. And this is not easy to sort out because the common presentation is so convoluted. And because no organ system is spared in this dysfunction, and when the adrenals are not in optimum shape, as a result, the adrenal recovery program that does not factor all this, these three organs plus other organs involved will oftentimes fail. Number six, there's an over-reliance on laboratory testing. While uh, saliva testing does have its place, uh, over-reliance on testing can be a problem because it's hard to clinically correlate, and sometimes the pictures and the data can be confusing. The most important thing in adrenal fatigue is a good history, and that should be the key to the overall process of recovery, and do not rely only on simple tests. And tests can be used as a supporting endeavor from time to time. Uh, lastly, there's a lack of comprehensive recovery program because most programs are focused on increasing energy and not focused on the total body to nurture the body, to gently re let the body recover and heal itself with nutrients, the right exercise, the right diet, the right lifestyles in a combination so that the body can fully recover. I hope that this presentation has been helpful to you. Uh, this article in its completeness uh, can be uh, viewed online at www.drlam.com. That's D-R-L-A-M. Com. It's at my free educational uh, website for the public. Uh, you can read and you can ask me questions from the website, or if you need uh, personalized attention, you can call my office. 